if I killed Lon SVR three now. Okay, so our SVR3 server is completely killed. We can go back to our LAN SVR2 and we can see that our LAN SVR5 server is now coming up and running again because we had that replica server created between both. Hello everyone. Today we're going to check out another Hyper-V feature and one that's really, really useful. We're going to look at something called Hyper-V replica server. Okay, uh, now this can be set up in a number of different ways, but we're just going to set this up in the simplest possible way uh, to start with. So first of all, what is replica server? Now, imagine, if you will, that I have a couple of servers. Say I have server one and maybe I have server two. Okay, and each of these servers is running Hyper-V and everything's all hunky-dory on both of these servers. Maybe, for example, I have a virtual machine running on server one. Right now, if I have the virtual machine running on server one, I can, with a little bit of jiggery pokery, actually live migrate that virtual machine to server two and back and forth. And I can do that on Hyper-V without any shared storage. But the problem is, what about if I have a failure? What about if server one suddenly decides to explode, uh, which does happen occasionally with servers? I, I'm a bit stuffed here because my virtual machine goes down and dies with the server. So Hyper-V Replica Server helps us get around that because what we can do is we can basically take this virtual machine here uh, that's on and live and we can actually make a copy of it on another server. And what this is, is it's basically an offline copy, um, offline helps me if I can spell there, offline copy of that virtual machine ready to come alive when something actually fails over. So in this case, if server one actually does die, what happens to this virtual machine? It doesn't become offline. What happens now is this now becomes an online virtual machine and can actually start serving data to our customers and to our people who are using that virtual machine. Uh, this is a great, great, great feature. It doesn't require any extra um, software with Hyper-V. It doesn't require any extra licenses with Hyper-V. The other cool thing about this that's not quite obvious when you set it up is this replication here. Now, this replication actually uses HTTP and HTTPS traffic to perform the replication, which means this is actually designed to also work over the internet Okay, it's designed to work in connections that are as slow as 512k. Now, that's very slow. I remember my first DSL connection being that speed. Uh, that's actually half a megabit. Okay, uh, yes, there was dial up as well before that, it was even slower. This does need something a bit more than dial up, but still, it still works on quite slow connections. What also is happening here is this is actually a lag. OK, so that means that these copies over here that are replicating between each other are not in real time. They are not a one one replication. Now, it kind of is possible to do that, but it needs a lot of extra stuff happening for that to actually work. And that's not an out the box solution with Hyper-V. That's something where things like VMware and Zen server come in a lot better for this. Now, with this lagged copy, what it means is that this server is actually going to be either 30 seconds, five minutes or 15 minutes behind. Now, this replica thing, it, it's kind of useful for specific software. So if you can imagine um, if this virtual machine over here, you've got to think about what software is running on there. Now, if this is running credit card transactions, this is not going to work very well because you've got this lag copy. You are going to lose data. But maybe this is just a standard file server. If we have a complete disaster and we can bring this thing back up and running with a 30 second lag. OK, cool. It's, it's not going to cause that much of an issue. Maybe, for example, this is not a file server. Maybe this is running a web service. OK, and if that's a 30 second lag for a static website, it's not going to change too much. Also, maybe the web service for this is actually sending logs off to some other service that are not on these Hyper-V servers either. So let's get into actually setting up these replica servers and get on with a demo and actually show you what it kind of looks like. OK, so we're back over here on the lab environment. Now, I've got a LON SVR2 uh, Hyper-V server that's got a LON SVR5 virtual machine inside it. That's cool. 
Uh, I also do have another server here uh, that we are going to replicate to, so LON SVR3. Now we need to go and do the setup between both of these servers to be able to replicate this LON SVR5. So let's go into Hyper-V settings over here and let's go into replication configuration. Now all we have to do here is enable this computer as a replica server and we can decide to use HTTP or HTTPS transfers. Now you really shouldn't use HTTP transfers for this at all, even internally, it's not a great idea. Um, I'm going to use it here because this is a lab, but in reality what you want to do is you want to actually go and put a certificate in here so that you can do this with a HTTPS transfer. Okay. Now, what we can do down here is for authorization, as long as everything's in the same domain, everything will work fine. If it's not in the same domain, you can kind of do this, but it requires a little bit of extra jiggery pokery to set up with some permission stacks. Um, but for the moment, these are both in the same domain. Everything's going to work fine, or it should work fine. Famous last words, right? So we've got allow replication from any authenticated servers or allow replication from the specified servers. Now we've only got on SVR2 and SVR3. We're just going to enable that for everybody at the moment and click, click apply. Uh, we've got to ensure that the TCP exception for port 80 is enabled in the firewall. So this actually has to be allowed internally as well. So what I do need to do is I need to pop into the firewall of Windows Server. Now, this is actually still going to be the same process uh, with Windows Server 2012 R2 up to 2025. There's going to be no difference in what I'm doing here between that over the last 10 years. So what I need to do is just pop into these inbound rules and go and find this Hyper-V replica listeners down here and just enable this rule. I'm going to enable it for HTTPS as well. Uh, remember, you really should just use HTTP just for testing, but it's fine for the moment. So let's click OK on that one. Cool. Now let's go over to LONSVR3 and let's do the same on the other side. So we need to go into Hyper-V settings, go into replication configuration, enable the computer, Kerberos HTTP, uh, allow replication from any authenticated server, apply, and it's going to learn about the firewall. Okay, so over here on LON SVR3, I'm just going to launch the firewall connection settings, the Windows Defender firewall with advanced security. I'm going to pop into these inbound rules down here. We're going to go and find uh, Hyper-V replica TCP listen, and we're going to enable those here on SVR3. Great, let's pop back to our original SVR2. All right, so I'm back here on SVR2. Uh, we should be set up and everything's ready to go. So I've got one SVR5 here, it's currently off. Uh, we could actually do this while the server's still turned on, uh, but I'm gonna do it while it's off because it just makes it quicker for a demo. So I'm going to enable replication for this server. Now we get a bit of a wizard because this is Windows and everything comes with a wizard. So my replica server is going to be LON-SVR3. It's gonna confirm I've got communication, that's cool. It's gonna do the replication on port 80 and it's even going to compress that data over the network to make it nice and fast. Now I don't actually have to replicate all the virtual hard drives attached to this server. So if I've got multiple, I could just select the OS drive if I wanted to. But I've only got one drive here anyway, so that's fine, we'll just select that one. What frequency do I want to do this with? 30 seconds, five minutes, or 15 minutes? Now, if you don't have the bandwidth for 30 seconds, if you've got a server that's changing rapidly, it's gonna fall out of synchronization quite quickly if you haven't got the associated network bandwidth. I'm just gonna leave this on um, five minutes for the moment. It's the default, that's fine. Notice you can't go granular with this. You've got those three options, 30 seconds, five minutes, or 15 minutes, that's it. Now, what we do also have here is the ability to have different recovery points as well. So when we're replicating on SVR5 um, over to, let's draw a couple of servers. So you've got your server one and your server two, okay? So when you're replicating your virtual machine from one to the other, right? You can do this in multiple one hour blocks. So instead of actually just restoring to one virtual machine, what you've got is kind of like snapshotted versions of that VM. So if you do have a disaster, maybe your disaster is not that you have actually have a complete server failure, but maybe your disaster is maybe there's corruption inside that VM. Maybe you've got like nasty black hat hacker person has managed to hack into your network and is now trying to crypto locker your entire virtual machine and you want to rapidly restore this stuff. Well, what you could do is you could restore to something that might be, for example, three hours older. So point is here with 
condition with configuring additional recovery points it's going to take up more space but it does give you that ability to fall back if you really want to okay so this one's a neat little trick when we're doing this initial replication like for example if we had our server one and our server two over here server one server two and our virtual machine for example this thing may be whoops let's call it a vm maybe this virtual machine is massive right maybe this is like a terabytes worth of virtual machine replicating that initially over the network might take a really long time so what you can actually do um, is you can actually take this virtual machine and you can drop this out to a usb drive uh, some sort of usb hard drive and literally move that manually over to that new server this is useful especially if these are two completely different sites okay so you know maybe this is in london uh, and maybe this is in somewhere that is really really far away and has really sketchy internet um i mean today most of the planet is hooked up pretty high speed but let, let's say you're out in i don't know um Bouve island okay uh now if you don't know where Bouve island is uh let's go and check that out on the map let's try and tell the see Bouve island uh, there we go. Uh, that's where it is. Okay. Uh, I bring this up because Bouvet Island is interestingly the furthest away from any other civilized population area on the planet. Okay. It is the furthest away that you can get from anybody else uh, while still standing on, uh, on an actual solid piece of ground. So yeah, internet connection there might be a bit sketchy. So you might want to actually send things over USB. Um, you might also be thinking to yourself, well, that might take a while as well, but you know what? Sometimes, sometimes it actually, it's actually faster to send things via FedEx. Um, if we go and have a look on the internet, uh, there's lots of things on the internet. There was something called IP, IP over avian carriers this one okay uh yeah let's ignore that <laughs> ignore the pictures so what the idea of ip over avian carriers was and there was actually an rfc standard for this um was that what we could do is we could attach small hard drives or even things like sd cards to pigeons and send the pigeons with the data and it would be faster than internet connections at the time between a couple of locations for large amounts of uh, large amounts of data and they call it IP over avian carriers uh, yeah n nerds do nerd stuff so let's go back over here let's go have a look at our replication we want to replicate immediately that's cool let's click finish on that one and what it's going to do is it's going to send that initial replica over the network for me okay these two servers sitting next to each other everything's all good so we'll wait for that to do that for a couple of minutes um, and we'll have a look at what it looks like after the replica has sent across the network okay that replica is now complete if i go over to lon svr 3 i should be able to see look i've got a copy of this server as well one of the um, annoying things about hybrid though is i can't immediately see this is a replica server so what you tend to get is on your live server you tend to get lon svr 5 and you get to see a state of started and it's all working and then you look at lon svr3 and you see lon svr5 with the state of off and you, you kind of panic a little bit because your server's off what you actually have to do is you have to look at this replication tab down here and actually see that this is in replication mode of replica and the replication is currently enabled uh, so yeah a little bit annoying there from a design perspective but that's what it is just be aware of it we are now completely set up for hyper-v replica server this is all good so if i go down here into replication i've got a few options i can actually view the replication health from here so we can actually see here this is normal everything's replicated it's got successful replication cycle all's great for us as well we can also if we want to uh, we can do a planned failover we don't have to actually turn this off so if i wanted to just turn off svr2 at the moment uh, we could have a situation where this actually replicates across as well so if we go into settings down here and i go and have a look at this server there is some options down here for replica we can see that this is being replicated to svr3 that's all good uh, what we can also see is we can actually see recovery points down here replication vhds and resynchronizations all the stuff that we'd set up previously 
This is not done on a server by server basis. This is done, done on a VM by VM basis. So you have to set this up for each individual virtual machine you want to set it up for, okay? Um, another thing you can do down here, if you are replicating to a different network, you also got this option here for failover TCP IP. So you can give a completely separate set of IP addresses. If for example, you're failing over to uh, a completely different site, a completely different building uh, that might be on a completely different subnet so that that VM can come up and actually work nicely. So one of the things I want to try here is to actually do a planned failover. Basically, I want to kick over SVR5 from SVR2 to SVR3. Uh, now to do that, one of the things I need to do is check that the virtual machine is actually turned off. Now I'm just going to turn this virtual machine off essentially by pulling the plug. You don't want to do that. Shut down your servers correctly, guys. It's just a demo. So if I go to replication and I click on planned failover, we can actually kick this over. And this is now going to replicate those changes, bring everything up to date, and actually replicate that over. If I do a planned failover, this isn't doing a 30 second, five minute or 15 minute lag. That's actually transferring everything across as if it's a live migration. Now, since this is kind of like a live migration, it's a lot faster because this thing is actually already replicated. All the main big block of data is already replicated. So you can use Replica Server to kick servers back and forth quite quickly. So that's now actually running here on LON SVR5. Remember, this is doing it with no centralized storage, and this is all ready to rock. So if I killed LON SVR3 now, Okay, so our SVR3 server is completely killed. We can go back to our LAN SVR2 and we can see that our LAN SVR5 server is now coming up and running again because we had that replica server created between both. That should boot up, should boot up perfectly fine. Uh, remember, this is really good, really flexible, but for some real time solutions, this is not going to work too well. For example, you don't want to click, kick back and forth domain controllers like this, uh, they might panic a bit with the being very time sensitive. You also don't want to do this for kicking back and forth things like exchange servers and SQL servers, but those things like SQL and exchange and, and domain controllers, they all have their own built-in replication services uh, for setting up things like SQL always on availability groups anyway. Um, but this very, very useful, very, very flexible, works perfectly fine with Windows, also works with Linux host operating systems as well. So, that was Hyper-V Replica Server. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a demo and an explanation of how this thing actually works. There is additional information to this as well. If you want to go and check out the Microsoft documentation for this, uh, you can also do Hyper-V Replica Server between, for example, clusters as well. So you can use things like shared storage. It doesn't have to be done with just non-shared storage like I did here in this demo. So there's a bit more to read up on, but if you like this Hyper-V Replica Server demo and you want to stick around for more, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.